investitures, Canadians listed in the New Year Honours received their awards at Buckingham Palace, where at the same time Lord and Lady Louis Mountbatten were both honoured, and where the Canadians included Lieutenant Colonel A. H. Jarvis, OBE, Lieutenant General H. D. G. Creer, C. B., Major General the Honourable P. J. Montague, with his son-in-law, Wing Commander Montcrieff. Major General G. R. Turner and Matron in Chief Neal. Corporal Leclerc and Lance Corporal Chambers. Brigadier General White of the Forestry Corps. Nursing sisters included Jean S. Taylor, Elva C. M. Honey, Edith M. Kurgan Murtry, Ida Henderson, and Doris L. Kent. Major H. O. Moran, MBE. Captain E. J. Manning, MBE. Lieutenant General Kenneth Stewart, CB. Lieutenant Colonel Fulton, OBE. Captain E.D. Magnus, MBE. Warrant Officer 1, Sergeant Major Steele, MBE. Lieutenant Colonel Colin Campbell and Colonel G.H. Basher, both OBE. Matron Blanche G. Herman. Major B. Sukharov, Royal Canadian Engineers. Sergeant Coglin, Essex Scottish. Sergeant Eyre, Provo Corps. Trooper Lalonde, Fort Garry's, BEM, and many others who gained royal recognition. History was made in the Canadian Army when new words of command were heard and a new kind of drill was seen at a recent changing of the guard and before the headquarters of the 5th Armored Division. Frenchmen, fighting Frenchmen, now attached to the Canadian Army for a period of training. Men who are largely survivors of a French armored formation that escaped at Dunkirk. Their sergeant is a Maréchal de Logis. Their troopers are cavaliers, their crash helmets are casques, and they're good soldiers. They're bon camarades. It was Ottawa Day in the Canadian Army when Mayor Stanley Lewis of Ottawa, on a visit to Britain, began a tour of units recruited from Ottawa with a call at number five, CCS. The nursing sisters, dressed for the first time in battle dress, put on a demonstration pitching of a big marquee. And then they showed how, when it comes to marching, they could march past with the best of them. The pipes were playing for the next unit that marched past the mayor. For the Cameron Highlanders of Ottawa made him welcome and showed him that capital soldiers come from the capital of Canada. Soldiers who can fight with the ski and do, the commando knight, or the machine gun, or with any weapon they may be given. His worship, the mayor, cast down the ranks of the Camerons, bringing them a message from the old hometown. message that later in the day he gave also to the men of another Ottawa unit, the Governor General's foot guards, their foot sluggers no more but mechanized, heavily armored tank men. And the mayor can take back to Ottawa, a picture of which any Canadian city might well be proud. And to conclude, the mayor visited the field survey company of the RCE, the map makers and map printers of the army, men who keep Ottawa on the map. The Canadian Army Cross Country Championship was held on a day practically perfect for such an event. Uh, there were teams representing each formation. The Lawrence Scots, the 11th Ontario Tank Regiment, the number one CACRU, the Royal Canadian Regiment, the Regina Rifles, the Fort Garry Horse, and it was a big field and a good one. The course was a trifle heavy in spots, but it was a real test of cross-country ability.
first man in was Corporal J.A. Eady, RCR from Little Current, Ontario. Second was Rifleman R. Branton, Regina Rifles from Edmonton. While third place was taken by Private A.G. Bielke, Westminster Regiment from Red Deer, Alberta. The winning team was the RCR, who had a wide margin over the Regina Rifles and the Westminster Regiment. The rest of the field was far behind. Major General the Honorable P.J. Montague was welcomed by Major Alice Sorby, senior quack officer, when he arrived to inspect the first class of CWAC recruits enlisted in Great Britain. The recruits were passing out on their initial training stage, and the occasion was marked by a ceremonial inspection. Later, General Montague took the salute. Their smart bearing and steady precision mark these young women soldiers as a worthy addition to the young corps of which they form a part. At the famous Queensbury Club in London were held the finals of the Canadian Army Individual Boxing Championships for 1943. The first bout was for the Bantam title and brought together Private E. Runyons of Campbellford, Ontario, uh, representing the 1st Division and Trooper L. Slobodian of Montreal, 3rd Division. Uh, Slobodian got the verdict. In the featherweight class, Private R. Doherty of Toronto, 1st Div, was last year's British and Canadian Army champion. He met up with Trooper D. Webb from Montreal of the 3rd Div. This developed in one of the best bouts of the night. But Doherty didn't have quite enough stuff to stop the dusky Montrealer. When the shooting was over, Webb had won the judge's decision and unthrown the former champ. When the lightweights got together, it was Private W. Buxton from Victoria, B.C., first div, who defeated Corporal P. Thibault from Montreal of the second div. The middleweight final was the first one in which no first division uh, representative took part. In this one, Lance Corporal R. MacDonald from Edmonton of the CRU tangled with Corporal A.L.D. Uh, Mabley uh, from Peace River. Uh, the two Albertans made this the closest fight on the card, and it was MacDonald who came out on top. Another close one was a light heavyweight bout. Here, Private J. Jamo uh, from Kingston, Jamaica, 4th Armored Div, encountered Sergeant J. Trudeau from Edmonton, 1st Division. It was anybody's fight until the last minute when Trudeau took the decision. The highlight of the evening was the heavyweight contest. The two big boys were Lance Corporal T.R. Falls of Liverpool, Nova Scotia, 1st Div, and Sergeant F. Glover from Vancouver, 5th Div. It was a real slugfest, but Glover was giving 34 pounds to his opponent, and Falls won the verdict. Major General Montague presented the awards. The next step now is the British Army Championship, so good luck, boys. His Majesty the King paid a short visit to units of 1st Canadian Corps troops. With British and Canadian senior officers, he first inspected the 7th Anti-Tank Regiment. Later, the King saw the tanks of the 1st Canadian Army Tank Brigade, the senior armoured formation of the Canadian Army. This brigade was formed immediately after the fall of France, when it became apparent that the tank would be the principal weapon of land warfare. The men are drawn from every part of Canada and many parts of the United States, from the maritime provinces, old French Quebec, the cities of Ontario, and the prairies and mountains of the West. While planes keep vigil in the sky, tank guns dip low in salute as they pass the reviewing stand. Across a narrow expanse of shining water lies the enemy, and it was a unit of this tank brigade which had the distinction of being the first armored force to cross that narrow expanse 
and come to grips with the enemy on the beaches of Dieppe. Proud indeed are these Canadians to display their armored might to their king, confident that when the day comes, they will prove that might in battle.